everywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. I hope you like that Golden Boot update because we are sticking with the European Championships with our fourth segment of today's show. We are in the home stretch of today's show. And we had a fantastic weekend slate of games from teams that are considered the contenders for the Euro's title in teams like Portugal and Germany and others like Georgia and Czechia who have just been really enjoyable to watch in this tournament. I think that you guys will definitely be thrilled to see some different players and different squads represented in my Euro's weekend update in terms of fantasy implications. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the most impressive and comprehensive win for me over this past weekend was Portugal's over a Turkey squad that really showed promise, looking like a dark horse contender, doing well in one of the best games in the tournament in recent in recent memory. A 3-1 win over Georgia for Turkey in their last game. They were coming into this with a lot of confidence, but Portugal just tore them apart with a lot of technicality and flair and creativity from their forward players. And one forward player in particular, a guy who I was really looking out for, and I told you guys all about, hope you consider rostering him or have rostered him, Bernardo Silva. One of the most technically sound players at this tournament. And when he's on his game, cutting inside and shooting, wreaking havoc on the wings, he is one of the best players in world football. He had one goal on four attempts. He has one block as well, four successful dribbles, and an 89% pass accuracy in this tournament. I especially look at a player like Bernardo Silva to grow into this tournament. Right now, as they as they finish up their final group game, Portugal is definitely looking like one of the most confident, swaggering team of this tournament. I definitely hold this Portugal team in a high regard mainly because they're not centered around a guy like Cristiano Ronaldo who holds so much aura and presence and weight in world football. They believe that different players can also contribute. Kudos to Roberto Martinez for getting the best out of the squad. I'm really, really intrigued to see how this Portugal team develops into this tournament because I think they can go very far. Switching from tournament contenders to tournament darlings, let's look at a player who is really incredible for a Georgian squad that has just played some can't-miss football. And Georgi Mamordashvili, one of the first goaltenders I mentioned in, in these recaps, he has 15 saves in this tournament, including 11 saves in their draw against Czechia, three punches off of corners, just fantastic goaltending. In that performance that draw against Czechia, 11 saves, 3.19 goals saved above expected. Outstanding from a goaltender who on international stage is really making a name for himself. I'm shocked that he hasn't been uh, contacted by a big club yet. He also had a fantastic domestic campaign at Valencia. George member of Dashville. George might have a short stay in this tournament when all is said and done, but it's not for lack of trying. They are one of the most exciting teams to watch in this tournament. They're entertaining. Their end-to-end style, their defensive frailties make them an enjoyable team to watch. And I'm just so happy that we get to see so many different nations represented in this tournament. Now I switch to a much more, shall we say, aging squad <laughs> in Belgium. They needed a victory over Romania. They got it. A 2-1 victory. 2-0 victory over Romania in a group that's looking to be one of the most competitive in the championship so far. But let's just go over some of the Belgian players, starting off with Kevin De Bruyne, who made a huge impact in this game. Kevin De Bruyne, obviously, one of the best midfielders in the world, and he was on his game over the weekend to seal that result. One goal and seven attempts for him. Only an 80% pass accuracy, very low for him, with six successful dribbles. And look at this. He's taken 11 corners already in this tournament. So... If you're looking for someone to get you a quick assist in your US Fantasy squad, look for Kevin De Bruyne should Belgium advance to be your guy. He still can do it at the highest level, and he's certainly helping this Belgium squad. The uh, 
remnants of the golden generation, if you will, kind of stick together as this tournament progresses. And they really need it as he kind of is the reason why they are what they are in this group. And so they definitely need to bolster Kevin De Bruyne's performance because that's the the key to success for Belgium, in my humble opinion. But another midfielder who I feel is getting a little bit underestimated in this tournament in Yuri Tielemans. I think that Yuri Tielemans, mainly due to the fact that Belgium's golden generation was so talented, might have gotten passed by. He kind of came up in the midst of that golden generation. Not a Belgian golden generation player proper, but kind of a protege of the golden generation. And so... He's kind of fallen by the wayside, but his play certainly hasn't. One goal, two attempts so far, 90% pass accuracy, so a little bit better than Kevin De Bruyne's. His goal came from outside the box as well. I just think that Yuri Tielemans is a very interesting player to watch in the knockout stages progresses because he can be a catalyst for the Belgian side that might need some of its younger quote-unquote players to step up. And so I'm really looking at Yuri Tielemans not just in real life, but for your fantasy squads, respectively, to be a guy who your confidence in rostering, mainly due to his abilities on and off the ball. I think that he's known for his outside-the-box goals, so that's another reason why potentially you can roster him, especially in the knockouts. So look for Yuri Tielens to be a threat for your fantasy team. And then, last but not least... In terms of the Georgia-Czechia game, Patrick Schick, he has been such a well-respected player for this Czech Republic team over many years. Had a fantastic Euro 2020 campaign, scoring the goal of the tournament in that tournament. And this tournament, he's looking to pick up where he left off. Obviously, kind of a rough domestic campaign on a Bayer Leverkusen squad where he was not seen as a top-level player for them, seen as more of a commodity coming off the bench for them. But in this tournament, he's looking to find his feet again. Getting that first goal will surely help him as Czechia looks to make it as one of the four best third-place teams, or even in the second-place position in that group. Five successful dribbles for Schick. One goal on seven attempts for him, and a 73.5% pass accuracy. Obviously, Patrick Schick, could be an option should Czechia advance to the knockout stages for your bench because of the fact that he has goals in him. But for now, I'm just happy seeing a player of Patrick Schick's caliber get going in this tournament because he can definitely be one of the better strikers heading into the knockouts. And just a guy who I wanted to highlight as Germany prepares for the knockouts and a guy who's definitely seen as a fox-in-the-box kind of poacher striker if you're looking for someone like that, and Niklas Fulkrug. Niklas Fulkrug might not play as many minutes as he deserves. He's one of those guys who is seen as a player who can come off the bench and have an immediate impact, a super sub, so to speak. But in the knockout rounds, Germany's going to be tested like it hasn't before. They could face Spain in the quarterfinals, Portugal in the semifinals if they make it that far. So they need someone off the bench who can add that level of impact, experience, and depth that Germany might so desperately need in a tight game when the going gets rough. And so Nicholas Fulkrug is going to be the guy that they're going to rely upon. He scored a fantastic goal yesterday against Switzerland. And he already has an outside-the-box goal in that game against Scotland also off the bench. So... While Nicholas Fulkrug might not be a player who is coveted in terms of minutes played, he can be coveted in terms of goals scored. He cannot be denied. Julian Magelsmann might use him as an emergency plan kind of weapon, calling on him when Germany is in a time of need. And so that's the reason why I wanted to highlight him. Because strikers are going to be at a premium in Euro's fantasy as the tournament progresses. And so picking up a guy like Fulkrug who can score goals in bunches, especially off the bench, and is just a huge target man presence, and is also a cheaper option than higher-end strikers like Kane or Lukaku, then you could certainly consider picking him up. But that should just about do it 
for this Euros Weekend recap. I hope you liked that. But coming up next, for the first time ever in the history of the podcast, I am going to be doing a deep dive into a fantasy football player. Who it is, you're going to discover right after the break. We're going to be looking at his stats from his career and how he can be an asset to you in terms of fantasy, but also what traits might make you want to shy away from him. We will be right back with what should be a fantastic ending segment on today's show. <laughs> 